camera rolling? The camera rolling? In progress. <laughs> yeah. All right, we are now being joined by Steve Mowry. We'll begin with a few questions here in the room. Go ahead, Danny. Steve, uh, very interesting uh, intro to the scrum there. What's the inspiration? The, I ended up wearing my monster, and I, a la Steve Cold, or Steve, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I ended up wearing my monster, a la Stone Cold Steve Austin. So um, I figured you're in for, a, in for a penny, in for a pound. You might have to go, you got to go do it the whole way. Certainly, certainly. And talk to me about that victory. I mean, it was quick. Did, did you expect to run through your opponent that that quickly? No, I thought it was going to be long. I thought it was going to be a long night. <clears throat> I really did. And, um, yeah, for Kim's fight, everybody that there is to fight. Yeah. So I thought that, um, I mean, I was you know, obviously hoping to get in there, get him out of there. But, um, no, I really thought I'd be in for 15 minutes of fighting. Sure. And you're 10-0. Uh, that's a, a nice number. 10 wins, zero defeats. Uh, how happy are you with uh, the progression of your career? Because it seems like it's it's been escalating quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, everything's on the right track. But, um, you know, that's not because uh, it's not because I haven't had a couple pitfalls or, you know, behind-the-scenes drama along the way. But, um, you know, I have always had the right people around me. Sanford, the, the Sanford crew, since, you know, I've gotten there when it was a Black Zillions, has always been my family. They've always been there to pick me up. They've always been there to tell me whenever – Things could be better. Things aren't looking good. I can maybe be pushing it harder. So, um, no, I mean, I, I'm happy. I am happy with it. I'm very blessed to say that I'm part of the Sanford MMA group. Yeah. I mean, you've been flawless uh, inside of the cage, but you mentioned there are some struggles. Uh, anything you can elaborate on? Uh, this is fucking life, you know. <laughs> my, I wake up every day, and I, I feel like I'm living the, uh, you know, my my childhood fantasy of being, you know, like, a world-renowned warrior and going out there fighting people for money. But, um, you know, that said, <clears throat> you know, the life, just little life things happen. But like I said, I'm very fortunate to have the right people around me. I have a good family, a good girlfriend, um, literally a good agent, literally all the right people that could that could be moving in the right direction. And I'm just so blessed. God's been so good to me. Yeah. And like you said, you've been doing a, a phenomenal work, but uh, maybe some fans now are wondering, it's probably time to see Steve in, in some big bouts, some no names. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you feel like up next should be somebody with uh, some name value, some, somebody that's been around Bellator for quite some time? Um, Rakim Cleveland was a PFL veteran, a champion in a couple other regional promotions. Sean, Sean Teed was the same way. Sean Asher, when I fought him, his only two losses were to um, current UFC top 10 guys. Um, so respectfully, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. What's next for you? Do you have uh, any names that you would like to face next? Yeah, so Marcelo Gorm, um, we'd We kind of had like a couple, you know, uh, misconnections, I guess, here and there. <clears throat> I, it's not disrespect. It's not not that I don't like the guy. But, you know, it's it's about the right now that I think makes sense to him and it makes sense to me. So, I, you know, I mean, I'd love to. This is this game's all about fighting the, the other best guys. And if Marcelo has a good idea, like – like us fighting, I think it's, I think it's time we act on yeah. that. Lassie, how far do you see yourself from from a title shot? Do you feel like the the gold is is far? Or do you think you, it's fairly close? It it could be ten years. It could be a month. I'm gonna put that gold on. Hey, congratulations on your victory. Thank you. It's Jim Barcelona, Miami Herald, and I'm just curious, what is it like fighting here, close to Sanford MMA, being in South Florida? I saw Lau was out there. You. Uh, Linton fighting tonight as well. Henry Hoop in your corner. Mm -hmm. Just what was that whole thing like tonight? No, it was beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I fought my first four pro fights in Florida. And, um, you know, I, I forgot, you know, I mean, when my last several were in Idaho. Well, my first with Bellator was in Idaho. And then my last, whatever, four or five were with, with Bellator in Connecticut. And um, <clears throat> I forgot how nice it was to be close to home, you know, have your own people around you the whole time. It's not that no, no knock on Connecticut, especially it's it's such a nice place and the commissions, or the the area up there is so conducive to fighting. But you know, there's no place like home. You know, I was able to, <clears throat> I was able to, you know, whatever, um, say goodbye to my family firsthand and not have to get on a flight. I can drive back to my house whenever we're done here. I don't have to take a flight. I don't have to wait another day to see my family. So that's beautiful. And I mean, Florida, Florida's my not my home state, my adopted home state. You know, I love it here. I've carved out a life for myself and. I don't know if I'm ever going to go anywhere else. And also, just what was it like your game plan going into this one 
and getting it done and then using the armbar submission and just was that just something you saw and you took it or just what was going on there yeah so it was like <clears throat> I, I don't really do the it's not that i don't do the game plan thing but it's it's much less of like you know a, a, a tight-knit script that you know i'm trying to follow line for line and more or less you know like okay, well, these are the things I'm looking for. If those don't work, these are the things I'm looking for. If those do work, these are the things I'm going to follow up with. Um, so, I mean, that said, the, the fight did go about as according to plan as, you know, we could have hoped. But, uh, you know, that said, um, there's always things you can improve on. Gilbert's here, my coach. Um, <clears throat> we're on our way back, and there's already a few things I think he and I are going to touch on, um, you know, before we sign for the next one. So, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting better, using every using every season of my life, every few fights to get better. And lastly, for me, there was a nice homage to Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Have you been practicing that, or is that just experience? Absolutely not. I wasn't allowed to watch uh, pro wrestling when I was a kid. My dad hated it. He thought it was, you know, like a, he thought it was an abhorrent, you know, um, abomination to sport and entertainment. And um, it wasn't until I got older that I was able to you know, watch for myself and appreciate the, the theatrics of it, you know, because it is ludicrous, but it's so much fun watching those guys. And Stone Cold, whatever you want to call him, athlete, entertainer, um, I did, of all the you know, pro wrestlers from that era and the current era, I think he's the one that, for me, I tend to resonate with the most. I like his personality. I like his, I like his philosophies. I think he's just so much fun. That attitude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The attitude era, too, right? All right, we'll take a few more here. Kobe? Hi, Steve. Great performance. Looked like just another day at the office for you when it comes right down to it. You Thanks. picked Gohm. Great choice, in my opinion. You're both coming off now with fantastic, impressive performances. Where do you think you have an advantage over Gohm, or do you? No disrespect, but everywhere. <clears throat> <laughs> and it's not be. It's, I think Gohm's very good. I think he's I think he's wonderful. And I think, like you said, his last few fights, he's, he's really, you know, turned a corner. He's really added a lot of, you know, new nuances to his game. Um, but it's a challenge I look forward to meeting head on. That's a fight I want to see too, buddy. Awesome. That's, well, I, I have a feeling, like I said, out there, I don't know if it'll be today. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. I don't know if it'll be 10 years from now. I feel like me and him and all, me and a lot of the other belts we're top 10 are going to have gonna have business. Last one here, Jay. Thanks very much. And, uh, Steve, congratulations on the win tonight. Um, Told me before the fight you weren't allowed to watch the X Files as a kid. <laughs> didn't let you watch pro wrestling as a kid. No, that, that's what I'm saying. He didn't let me watch pro wrestling. I wasn't. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Yeah. What was his reaction when you said, "Hey, I'm gonna be a professional fighter"? Oh, he laughed it off. Both my parents did. <clears throat> um, and that's uh, interesting to see how how life comes full circle like that. You know, like my parents both. I asked them both, and they both thought I was probably gonna go the route of like a teacher or a professor, or, you know, whatever some. Whatever, like the education, some kind of, you know, whatever, uh, what's the word, a cerebral job, you know, and, you know, look at me now punching people in the head for money. Well, dude, a cerebral assassin to borrow from wrestling as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're telling me. I know, I know Stone Cold, I know The Undertaker, I know The Rock, and that's about the beginning and the end of it. All right, thanks for the time, Steve. Congrats on the win. Thanks so much, guys.